Good morning. In the previous class, we talked about listening, the different types of listening. In that, we discussed about passive listening, what is active listening, what is passive listening, when do we say that it is a he is a he or she is a passive listener or when do we say that he or she is a active listener. We say that, that when somebody is physically present but mentally absent, that kind of listening is said to be passive listening. The next type of listening that we discussed in the previous class was critical listening. Critical listening means whenever you listen something with the idea to accept or reject the opinion that is said to be critical listening. In the same context we said we gave the example of a salesman that is when you listen to a salesman or when you listen to a politician you are adopting a critical listening pattern wherein you either accept the idea or reject the idea. Another kind of listening is emphatic listening wherein you whenever you are listening to somebody who is in problem, who is distressed, in order to comfort that person, the kind of listening that you provide to that person is said to be emphatic listening. Next, we said comprehensive listening, the type of listening that is required in a classroom wherein you need to understand, you need to comprehend what the teacher or what the speaker is speaking that kind of listening is said to be comprehensive listening. The last kind of listening was appreciative listening. Whenever you are listening to a concert, whenever you are listening to music, you are doing it to derive aesthetic pleasure out of it. Such kind of listening is said to be appreciative listening. Today we are going to listen or we are going to talk about the principles of effective listening. As you can see that there are four principles that go into effective listening. The first one is positive attitude, next concentration, third interaction and fourth question answer technique. Let us discuss it one by one. Positive attitude. When we talk of positive attitude, we mean that a person should have a very very positive attitude towards the speaker. You must not evaluate the speaker. What you should do is you should opt a positive attitude towards whatever the speaker is trying to say and then listen to it very very carefully. Positive attitude is helpful in every sphere of life. When you have a positive bent of mind, automatically you would listen to the person in a positive manner and you will be able to gain information in the right direction. So, to have a positive bent of mind is very important whenever you are listening to somebody. Next, we say concentration. Now, everything is interrelated. If you are positive, if you have a positive attitude, automatically you would tend to concentrate on whatever the person is trying to say. You would tend to focus on whatever the person is trying to deliver. Now that will help you in the long run and that will help you gather most of the information or gain the best of information so that whenever you talk about it, you will be talking about it in sense you will be talking absolute sense about the information that you have gathered next we say interaction it is always better to have an interactive session it is always interesting at the same time the speaker and the audience they seem to be connected if there is an interaction between them so when the speaker has finished speaking or if the speaker gives you a chance to interact, please do interact with the speaker, clear your doubts and question answer technique that we are coming to it next. Please ask questions when the person has finished speaking and when the person asks you that if there are any doubts, if you want to ask anything more, please do ask the person and clear your doubts. The interactive session between you and the speaker will always be a beneficial one as it will help you as well as the speaker to understand that how much you have understood 
the speaker also in turn wants to know that how much you have understood so if there is something that you have not understood if there is something that you want to have more information on please tell the speaker about that and the speaker would be happy to give you answers to the questions that whatever you ask now that kind of session makes uh, make is very interesting and we will find you will also find that you will enjoy the session instead of making the session monotonous wherein only one person speaks and others are just listening at that point of time you may tend to be passive listeners because it is very difficult to control human mind it tends to move away so you need to understand you need to focus on all these things and then only you would be able to listen to the person carefully next we are going to discuss what are the traits of a good listener there are few traits there are few qualities that makes a listener a good listener in continuation with what we have read we will now elaborate upon those points which will make you a good listener in the same context we talk about being non evaluative the second is paraphrasing third inviting further contribution and fourth and the last one being responding non verbally let us take them one by one being non evaluative often we tend to evaluate the speaker even before we have listened to the speaker so you have to understand that you can evaluate you have all the rights to evaluate the speaker of course you are there for that but at the same time listen to the evaluator first listen to the person who has to say something to you listen to the speaker carefully and then evaluate the person if you are an active listener your verbal and non verbal behavior would communicate to the speaker that you are actively listening to whatever that person is telling you and the purpose is to communicate as you can see it is you must be just listening to what is the content please overlook the other factors like how the speaker is looking what kind of address of the speaker is having what or do not have any kind of bias or prejudiced opinions about the person you must have heard that he or she is not a good speaker or he or she is not is not is not very presentable or he or she will uh, always speak on these things so do not go with the biased opinions whenever you are listening to somebody have a open mind and do not evaluate the speaker before he or she has finished speaking this will help you a lot because when you listen to somebody with your own bias and with your own prejudices you tend to look in for those prejudices and you tend to evaluate that person with that background that you have received for that person that will tend to be negative that will affect you as well as the speaker so try that you do not evaluate the speaker before he or she has finished speaking paraphrasing paraphrasing means rephrasing supposedly there is something you wish to clarify a point there is something that you have not understood there is something that you have missed out and you want to clear your doubt upon that so instead of just asking tell me more about this or just telling the speaker that uh, I, i have not listened to this please tell me more about it now these kind of words or having such an attitude will may annoy the speaker so instead of that you can rephrase it you can say that as i gather you want to say tell that as i gather from whatever you have said you would like to speak this or this is what you tend to mean so you mean to say that or do you mean that these kinds of phrases whenever you use these kind of phrases the speaker would be encouraged and in turn you would be given the best of information so try and rephrase what are the doubts and confusions that you have or you have missed out on something instead of saying that uh, i did not understand that or i did not do that or that instead of 
finding out lame excuses to save yourself, it is always good to be honest. Say honestly that uh, I have not understood this point or I have I was a little occupied when you were speaking about this. Please can you explain me the point again? Can you please come back to this point again? This will this is another way of gathering information from the person and the person I'm sure would help you, would like to help you and give you the best of information. Inviting further contribution. Supposingly, you have the speaker has, speak, has spoken and uh, there are some things that he will speak on a general note and, but you want some more information on it. So, you should, when the person says that you would like to something, know some, something more on this topic, please go ahead and you, can, you may encourage the speaker to speak by using these words. Can you throw more light on this? Can you please tell me something more about this? It would be great if you expand more on this. I would appreciate if you could please come again to that point. Now these are ways that will help you gain information. If you are speaking in this tone, if you are being polite, at the same time assertive, people will like you and people will be very happy to share information with you. See, arrogance will not land you anywhere. So please be polite. Be good if you are asking something and even if you are asking something beyond the syllabus, it's always good. Everybody will like to share information that the person has. Nobody likes to keep the information or hold the information. The speaker would definitely like to share the information but the only thing that a speaker looks forward is an interest in the audience. Please give the message that you are interested you are a good audience, you are an active listener and you are listening to that person very very carefully and you are very much interested in whatever the person is speaking. This will encourage the speaker and he or she would share the best of information with you. So this is called inviting further contribution. As I always said and I have been saying it, that our non-verbal behavior is quite obvious and it plays a major role in communication skills. It plays a major role whenever we are speaking to others at the same time whenever we are listening. So when you are listening to somebody, please give a positive body language. Your body language should be very very positive. Respond non-verbally. At times when you are able to understand the thing, please give slight nods, look into the eyes of the speaker, do not stare, that doesn't mean that you keep on sharing the speaker, no. There is a different connotation between sharing and looking into the eyes of the speaker. So look at the speaker, give, uh, have a pleasant smile on your face and give slight nods, you, your shoulders, your postures, they communicate a lot. Please have a forward movement, You when you can have your back straight and you can have an attentive posture. When you, are att you have an attentive posture, the speaker gets to know that you are interested in the lecture or you are interested in the session and you would, he would be able to notice you and give more attention towards you. So this will help you in responding in a better manner. We also talked of, uh, in the previous session, we also talked of asking questions. Yes, of course, question answer technique is a very good way to make your session an interesting one. But at the same time, remember that you should not make or you should not ask questions that are irrelevant or you should not ask such kind of questions that are only for gaining attention. Now that would create a wrong impression about you. Ask relevant questions, questions that are specific, questions that are required. A person would be happy to answer such questions. Again, do not be repetitive. Supposingly, a person has asked one question and the same question you put it into different words and present it to the speaker. Now that will be again wrong. Please ask questions that are relevant. Please ask questions that you really want to know and do not ask questions just to gain or gather attention. All these things will go a long way 
Now you need to understand that whether you are into a corporate setup or into any kind of setup, whenever you are listening, for example, even in group discussions, that is our next, next topic, even in the group discussions when you will participate, a good listener is always appreciated. You need to listen to the views of your participants, of the other students who are participating or of your other co-mates and then reciprocate to that or respond to that. If you are just speaking about your opinions, of your opinions and not listening to other what others have to say, that, will, that may land you in trouble because you are not showing the team spirit. So be a good listener, be an attentive listener. That will help you in the process of listening or that will help you be a good listener. We may now discuss the process of listening. The process of listening is very simple and uh, we have already discussed it in our previous classes. Just the thing we are just trying to put it together and now we are going to discuss upon it. The first is hearing, attention, remembering, evaluating and responding. Hearing. We have talked about it earlier also. Hearing is a we can say it's an electrochemical process that is when the sound when the uh, sound waves they fall upon our eardrums we get the impulse with the stimuli is generated and we are then able to hear now hearing and listening are different hearing is an electrochemical process it's a natural process but listening requires a conscious effort on the part of the listener to gain information. We hear several noises around us, but we do not listen to them. We listen only what we want to listen. So that is the difference between listening and hearing. Hearing, we may hear thousands of voices, we may hear thousands of noise or everywhere, everywhere around, but we do not listen to that because listening requires a conscious effort. Then the next is attention. When you listen to something, it also depends upon the area of interest and you will be attentive only to that thing that, will, that is of your concern or that is of your area of interest. So you would pay attention only to that part. And the next is remembering. As we said that you will be attentive and you would be able to remember. So when you are attentive, you automatically you are remembering the things in the right note. You are able to recall the things because you have been attentive to what to that part of information. Again, the area of interest of every person would vary. Some may be interested in physics, some may be interested in chemistry, some may be interested in English, some may be interested in mathematics. So your span of attention would be different in these classes and you will be able to remember more in the class in which you are interested. So your span of memory would support you in those classes where your attention is more and your naturally you would be able to remember through whatever the person has said more. Most of it would you will be able to recall or remember for future use in those classes or in those lectures or in those sessions. Evaluating. Evaluating means whenever you listen to something, you evaluate it. You take it. It is as if you are filtering. You filter the information the, that is essential to you or that is that you require. It is not necessary that you will remember all the information or you will take in all the information. You will take up your part. That is your idea of interest and you will evaluate that only. And not everything would be remembered by you. So in a lecture when we talk of, we say that whatever you have understood, what uh, you would take in or you would understand only the part that you are interested into. You will not be able to understand everything or, or whatever has been taught in the span of 50 minutes or 55 minutes. It is not possible. You will be able to recall it. In a short, in a nutshell, you will be able to tell it. But again, it will vary or it will depend upon your area of interest. The next we say is responding. So when it comes to responding, 
you would be able to respond to the thing that you have understood clearly you have you will not be able to respond to anything that you have not understood in the correct light or you have not understood properly so this makes the process of listening the listening process is a very very interesting one and the advice that i would like to give you would be that you should listen to everything in a very very proper manner and then evaluate it that is whatever you have how much have you gained the information about it are you lacking in some points there may be points there may be something that you have missed out upon please share your notes with your co-mates that is with your classmates and find out that if you have missed on something you may add to the per what other person has noted down at the same time you may gain from what other person has noted down so in a way sharing helps and discussion of course is very very essential after listening to something you may should discuss upon it whatever has been discussed in the class or whatever you have listened to in the classroom please have a open discussion discussion about it with your classmates that will help you remember more if you have missed out on some points you would be able to gain those points because if your friend has written those points you would be able to share your new notes exchange your notes and you would be able to gain more information on it that's all for today in the next class we will talk about the barriers and all the obstacles that come into the process of listening i hope you enjoyed today's lecture if there is anything that you have not understood please let me know i will be happy to explain to you again thank you